Lord bless everyone, and you're hearing the program, Mr. Kakalides and the Bible Podcast. And we're going to continue today with Genesis chapter 4, verses 16 to 26. This is after Cain leaves the presence of the Lord. We read verse 16 says, Then Cain went out from the presence of the Lord and dwelt in the land of Nod, which means the land of wandering, on the east of Eden. Um, this is, is very important to understand something, <clears throat> that um, the descendants of Cain, everyone was ungodly. Um, I'm going to read an old-time book. Um, it's called the Book of Jasher. It says, Because in that time the sons of men, the seed of Cain, began to multiply and to afflict their souls and hearts by transgressing and rebellion against God. And this is um, Joshua chapter 2, verse 2. And it was in the days of Enosh that the sons of men continued to rebel and transgress against God to increase the anger of the Lord against the sons of men. And the sons of men went and they served other gods, and they forgot the Lord who had created them in the earth. And in those days, the sons of men made images of brass and iron, wood, stone, and they bowed down and served them. Every man made his God, and they bowed down to them. And the sons of men forsook the Lord all the days of Enosh, and his children, and the anger of the Lord was kindled on account of their works and abominations which they did in the earth. Okay, and I just want to read a little bit about that. It goes into Close. greater. It goes into greater. Close. It goes into greater um, detail, but just want you to know that the ancient books of the past. Um, they spoke about that. They spoke about um, the descendants of Cain being evil in the presence of the Lord. <clears throat> um, the, the Tagum, which is a paraphrase, um, Old Testament states, And Cain went out from, the, from before the Lord and dwelt in the land of wandering of his exhale, which had been made for him from before as the Garden of Eden. And Cain knew his wife, and she conceived and bare Anak. And he built a city and called the name of the city after the name of his son, Anak. Basically, this was the same thing we read in verse 17. But um, in the other Tagum that I'm going to be reading, it says that at that time God gave him rest. Um, let me try to find that passage. Um checking old time sources and I want you to to see this okay let's found it I believe I did found it yes and Cain went out from before the Lord and dwelt in the land of wandering and outcast which was made for him in the beginning in the Garden of Eden. And Cain knew his wife, and she conceived and bare Anak. And he became a builder of a city, and called the name of the city after the name of his son, Anak. And there was born to Anak, Irad, and Irad begat Mahuahel. So it, it tells us that somehow Cain was able to find rest. Okay, he bears this son named Enoch, but all his sons are not worshippers of God. Um, this is not the Enoch from Genesis 5. This is another Enoch. This Enoch did not follow God. The descendants of Cain did not follow God. And so we see the descendants of Cain. And none of them are, are, are godly descendants. None of them are following after God. Because men don't start to call upon the name of God till you get to verse um, 26. But before that, you don't see no one following after God. They're, they're following their own desires. Uh, this son that Cain has, 
Enoch, um, his Anak, his name means dedicated. But dedicated to what? It most likely wasn't to God. And Anak has met Hugel, his son, which his name means smitted by God. Smitted, smitted by God. <clears throat> wasn't because he was a good son, right? And then he has Lamech. And Lamech names means powerful. And this Lamech, <clears throat> um, down the list, yes, Lamech, Mayhel beget a Methuselah, and Methuselah beget Lamech. Okay, Methuselah, his name means um, who is of God, who is of God. So there's a knowledge of God, but they're not calling of God. They're not calling upon God. And Lamech, his name means powerful. <clears throat> well, their names may, the first one, um, the one after Enoch, his name means smitted of God. Then his son became um, one who is of God. And the other one, his name is powerful. Then Lamech took for himself two wives. The one was Ada, and the name of the other one was Zela. <clears throat> this is the first guy to have two wives. <clears throat> and what we read about this, and Ada bore Jabel, he was the father of those who dwell in the tents and have livestock. And his brother's name was Jubal. He was the father of all those who played the harps and the flute. When they say they were the father, it means they were the first ones to create that. They were the first one to do these things. And as for Zela, she also bore Tuba Cain, an instructor of every craftsman in bronze and iron. And the sister of Tuba Cain was Nama. <clears throat> then Lamech said to his wives, Ada and Zela, Hear my voice, wives of Lamech. Listen to my speech, for I have killed a man for my wounding me, for wounding me, even a young man for hurting me. Okay, the story behind this was that he ended up killing Cain himself. Let me read the story behind this. <clears throat> it's, it's, Jewish folklore. So I'm I'm not telling you that this actually did happen. Um let's me read this. Lamech being in the woods with one of his sons and hearing a noise in it, supposing it to be a wild beast, cast a stone which fell upon Cain and Cain and killed him ignorantly. And the lad that led him said, What hast thou done? Thou hast killed Cain. At which, being very sorrowful, after the manner of penitence, he smoked his hands together, and the lad standing before him, he struck his head with both of his hands and killed him unaware. And coming to his wives, Ada and Zela said to them, Hear my word, he that slew Abel shall be avenged sevenfold, but Lamech seventy times seven, who killed a man with a cast of a stone, and a young man by clapping of his hands. So, so called the story was he killed Cain. Uh, there was another story how it would, he killed Cain as well that goes like this. Um, <clears throat> Cain being a great grandfather, his son, his grand, his son Tuba Cain, according to a tradition of the Jews, um, Cain being very old and blinded, weary, um, he, he sat in a thicket among the trees to rest himself. When Lamech, who was blind also, led by Tuba Cain hunting, who seeing Cain and taking him 
for a wild beast, bid Lamech draw his bow, which he did, and killed him. But coming nearer and finding it was Cain, was wroth and angry, and slew the young man. So there's two different traditions. There's one that he killed Cain with a bow, and the other one he killed Cain with a rock. And the young man that was killed was Tuba Cain. <clears throat> so there's two different traditions, and there might be a few others of how this man um, killed um, another person. He killed actually two people, killed a young man and killed Cain. So I don't believe he killed Cain. If not, the Bible would have said it, you know. Um, I don't think that happened. The Bible would have not been quiet on that issue. But in verse 24, he says, If Cain shall be avenged sevenfold, then Lamech seventy-sevenfold. Just, I'm going to multiply this. And this is not God saying it, it's Him saying it upon Himself. In other words, I'm going to send my protection upon myself. And Genesis 4.15 says, And the Lord said to him, to Cain, Therefore whoever kills Cain, vengeance shall be taken on him sevenfold. And the Lord said, Mark on Cain, lest anyone finding him should kill him. Lamech wanted more protection for himself, so he sent himself, as it was, a, a special protection upon himself, so no one would harm him. He was protecting himself. But guess what? I don't know how Lamech died, but he sure wasn't a good person. Um, we see the results. Of Adam and Eve's sin, what Eve and Adam sinned, they ate of the forbidden fruit, and um, God saw them there was going to be death. The first death was the death of Abel. Then we see another um, two people that died. Um, these two people are unknown. We don't know who they are. We don't know who they are. But we do know one thing. That he died, and that was the result of Adam and Eve's sin. Um, our sins got consequences, and we have to be careful what we do. Uh, what we do affects other people's lives as well as ours. Let's play a song. Let's play. This is the day. Oh, not this is the day. Um, let's play. So said I you. Thank you. 
thy cross with patience and then one day with joy to lay down to hear my voice well done my faithful servants come share my throne my kingdom and my crown as the Then we see in verse 25, Adam knew his wife again. He knew Eve again. He had a sexual intercourse with her. And she bore a son and named him Seth. Seth means appointed. For God has appointed another seed for me instead of Abel, whom Cain killed. Verse 26, And for Seth, to him also a son was born, and he named him Enos. Then men began to call on the name of the Lord. This is what our translation says, uh, Tagum, which is translation from 70 AD, uh, like a paraphrase version said, Then in his days the Son of Man destined or forbore from praying in the name of the Lord. And in the Septuagint, it says, He hoped to call on the name of the Lord God. So, we're going to see the, the line of Seth as a godly descendants. The line of Seth are the godly ones. The line of Cain are the ungodly one, ungodly ones. Um, most likely when the angels um, in chapter 6 had intercourse with the women, most likely they were from Cain's descendants, and not from the descendants of Seth. It is believed they were mostly from Cain descendants. Um, let's play another hymn. Let's play, I Sing the Mighty Power of God. I sing the mighty power of God that made the mountains rise, that spread the flowing sea abroad and build the lofty skies. I sing the wisdom that ordained the sun to rule the day. The moon shines full at his command and all the stars obey. I sing the goodness of the Lord that filled the earth I sing the mighty He formed the creatures with His word And then pronounced them good Lord, how Thy wonders are displayed Where'er I turn my eye if I survey the price I tread or gaze upon the sky, there's not a plant or flower below but makes thy glories known. And clouds arise and tempests blow by order from thy throne. Borrows light from thee is ever in thy care, and everywhere that man can be, thou God art present there. 
um, Seth had a son, and he named his name Enos, um, which means man. And n- tomorrow we'll be studying Genesis chapter 5. And we'll probably stay a while between verses 1 and 1 to 3. We're probably going to be focusing on verses 1 to 3. Why? Because it's very important because we're going to study on the image of God. Um, how man lost the image of God. And what is the image of God? We want to focus on that tomorrow. That's very important because many people, um, they think that the image of God is spirit. Well, it's not the spirit that's the image of God because people that don't know God have a spirit. Even animals have a spirit. You know, the image of God is different. It's different from spirit. And I've overheard somebody say that the image of God was a spirit and was the spirit of man. And it, it doesn't line up with the scriptures. And there's also some other theories. And we're going to look at all those theories. And we're going to see what the image of God is. And it's going to be a very interesting study. And we're going to see how Adam lost the image of God. And how we gained the image of God back in Christ. That's going to be tomorrow's study and what we're going to focus on. Um, that's me just say a prayer for anyone who needs prayer. Um, if you need prayer, just... You know, you could just text me at revkakalides at gmail.com. And if you need prayer, I'm here to pray for you. If you need prayer, if you have a question concerning the Bible, any topic of the Bible, please feel free to email me. If you have a question on the cult, um, if you want to know if... If this is if you're in the right church, uh, what is that church really teaches? Please email me, and I'll give you what their beliefs are, and if you should leave that church or not. So I'll dig up information, and I'll let you know what they believe, and if you should continue with them or not. Anyway, this is Mr. Kakalides from the Mr. Kakalides and the Bible Podcast. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, so just just thank you, Lord God, for being able to wake up this morning and to be able to study your word together. And we just pray, Lord God, your blessing upon everyone, Lord God, that's hearing this program. Bless them spiritually, physically, emotionally, mentally, Lord God, financially, Lord. We pray, Lord God, that you will open the doors, Lord God, that only you can open and shut the doors that should not be open in our lives. And Lord God, help us to do your will. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Let's play another song. Let's play in times like these.
I said that I read I read from sources sometimes our ancient sources, the Book of Jasher, Josephus, um, and some other books that I will quote. But these are not biblical. They are not the Bible. Um, I want you to know that, and they can error in their interpretation. The Bible tells us very clearly we have to be careful giving heed to fables. Um, 2 Timothy 4 verse 4 says, And they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall turn towards fables. So we have to be careful. Titus 1 14, not giving heed to Jewish fables. 1 Timothy 1 verse 4 says, Neither give heed to fables and endless genealogies which promote questions rather than godly edifying in the faith. So do. So I just want you guys to be careful with fables. The things I read, I, I read as just a side note, not for you to say it as the Bible itself. And when I quote those sources, I, I'm going to quote you sources outside of the Bible at times. But I don't want you to take it as the Word of God. The Bible is the Word of God. There's no other Word of God apart from the Bible. Yes, prophecy is the Word of God, but prophecy needs to be tested to see if it is the Word of God. The Bible is a sure anchor which you can trust, you can depend on that it is the Word of God. Not no historical sources. Yes, we use them as a means of interpreting the truth. And we say, well, I like the Book of Enoch. I, I read the Book of Enoch. I think the Book of Enoch is very inspiring. But I don't consider it as a biblical source. I think there, there are things there that will help us understand the Bible. But I don't consider it as a source where it contradicts the Bible. I would rather stay with the Bible than go to that source. There are some people that would take the source and stay with the source and say, well, it helps me understand the Bible more. No, when it contradicts the Bible, that's when you go to the Bible instead of going to the source. This Bible is your source. So we don't heed the fables. But yet, there might be truths in those things, so we, we read them as a side note. Oh, this is interesting. This is what they thought. Um, this might be true, but it's not really known and if it's true. But it is a help to understand better in the times of Bible, um, biblical times, or what they read, what they thought, and so forth. I hope you guys understood what I'm saying. Anyway, um, I'll see you next program on Mr. Kakalides and the Bible Podcast. Lord bless you, love you all, and... Uh, we'll try to do one um, another program tonight, if God wills. Um, got a couple things I have to do, and I will see you in the next program. Bye.